Hello and welcome to season three of the Vox Talks. I'm delighted to introduce an absolute superstar of an alumni for Hot House with you today. And she's actually dialing in from Greenwich in London. And I'll let her talk about herself as we go along. But just a quick reminder, whether you're watching it in the morning or the afternoon, please feel free to share this to any young people or any young person that you know that might be interested in following a career that um, this superstar is going to tell you all about. So we hope you enjoy the talk. And if you've got any questions, send them through and we'll get them through to us straight away. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, it's my great pleasure to announce the wonderful Ruth Taylor. Woo! And the crowd and band go wild. Morning Ruth, how are you? <laughs> Morning John, thank you so much for that for that introduction. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm very well, thank you. Hopefully, I can I can live up to that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you can. I mean, you're absolute superstar in the world of um, law. I know that, and so this is going to be super super exciting for those kids that might be thinking about doing something in the legal environment. So, if it's okay, would you mind telling the listeners or the viewers at home what you do now? Uh, yes, I can. So I am a solicitor and I qualified as a, a solicitor back in September of last year. Um, and I work for a firm called Pinsent Masons, who are an international law firm who have offices all across the UK and across the world as well. Um, and the particular area of law that I specialize in is planning and environment law. Um, so I work with clients who are promoting big projects. Uh, and this ranges from things like um, big energy schemes. So obviously the bit, there's a big focus on climate change at the moment. So it's, it's quite often uh, renewable energy schemes that I'm working on. So things like solar and wind power. Um, and then I also work with with developers uh, on things like road schemes and rail schemes and housing developments as well, um, because I, I didn't realize this when I started as a lawyer, but um, things can't just be built. There's a certain uh, <laughs> there's there's a lot of regulations and rules about what can be built where because there are a lot of competing interests uh, at stake um, and you can't just throw up a massive building or a new road or a load of solar panels uh, without kind of getting consent for it. So so that's what I do. I help help developers get consent for things like that. So you make sure that things can go through or after planning before planning. Is it the build part? Which bit is it? Um, so it's mainly getting the planning permission. So it's about the strategy of, of getting those consents because there's lots of things um, to think about, such as sort of things to do with habitats and environment and making sure that local people um, have, uh, have enough opportunity to, um, to, to have their, their voices heard when, when these schemes are being promoted so that all of these interests are kind of balanced um, as these things get built. I think that's really interesting, actually. The the ability to contribute to the narrative is kind of um, a key part of what's going on. And for those people watching today, it's actually the National Mental Health Week for children at the moment. So one of these things about environments and the ability to discuss and have your voice heard is one of those things that really helps young people um, develop resilience and, you know, like a really brave and strong mental um, well-being. So it's kind of... It, People don't realize, but everybody has the opportunity of building a job and a career that contributes towards a society's well-being and a society's growth. I, I'm not sure whether people realize that when they follow these careers, but it's a, it's, it's a good side effect or a bonus. I mean, was that something that you were passionate about, that people, you wanted to make a difference for, you know, good reasons? I mean, the, all those things you talked about there, the environment and making sure those things, they're all things that are key to our, you know, well-being. Um, yeah, I, I think that's all completely true. And, and definitely, I think I think it's one of the great things about pursuing a career in law is that it's so incredibly varied. And you probably don't realise like, when someone tells you they're a lawyer, that can encompass so many different things, because there's so many types of lawyer, like there's, there's lawyers who work for, 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 you know, buying and selling companies, there's lawyers who work um, on property transactions as lawyers who work in, in, in criminal law there's there's so many different things you can do um, I mean there's even there's even lawyers who do things to do with music and intellectual property um, so it's that's one of the great things about it is that it's so varied and you can you can pursue your own interests um, within within the kind of technical field of law I think that's amazing and I, I think it's a very valid point that 
you know, a lot of musicians might really like music, but would like a different type of job. And so they, they can actually build a career in music, but around law and music, whether it's patent law for new products or whether it's the licensing law, the opportunities are quite diverse nowadays. And I think law is a booming subject. I think people are very interested in law, aren't they, at the moment? I, I know that you went to um, Cambridge. Do you feel like sharing maybe your journey from sixth form to how you got here today? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so I did, uh, my A-levels were in uh, history, chemistry, maths and economics. So it's quite a range of like science and humanity subjects. Um, and I ended up applying um, to do history at Cambridge because I kind of decided when I was doing my A-levels that I was more interested in the humanity side than than the science side and I also think I was a bit better at the humanity side um, so and I was lucky enough to get a place at Homerton College at Cambridge um, so I went off to study there for three years um, and I had the best time and as well as um, obviously doing my history degree I was really involved with the music scene as well so I kind of I made sure that I I made time to, to keep that as, as part of my life and part of my routine, which I'm really, really pleased that I did. Um, and I then, um, I actually spent a year um, working for the student union of my college as the, uh, oh. as the student union president. Um, and it was in that time when I um, sort of got interested in law and started applying um, for, for legal jobs. Wow. So was it a law conversion after the Cambridge experience? Yeah, that's correct. So yeah, I should say there's there's kind of two main routes into law. You can either do an undergraduate law degree and then you have to do a year of study bef before you can go and work um, for a firm and practice or um, you can do a non-law degree and this can literally be anything. It can be a science degree, an arts degree, whatever. Uh, and then you can go and do a one year conversion course um, or you can cram it into one year or you can do it as two years and do it part time and work depending on your situation. Um, I did a one year conversion um, and during, before I did that, I was offered a job by the law firm that I now work at um, to do something called a training contract. So I knew that I was going to work for that firm afterwards. That's cool. I, mean, I think some of the mums and dads that we have currently around the country are quite interested in that process about how do you get onto a law conversion. So I know a lot of mums and dads are thinking, well, my student might want to go and do a pure subject like history or music or maths. How do they then get into something? So is it very difficult to find law conversion schemes or, you know, a training contracts? Um, it's I mean, it's, it's relatively straightforward to get onto a law conversion scheme. The more tricky part is, is actually getting a training contract. And a training contract basically means that a firm is willing to sponsor you to do your conversion course um, and right. to do the year of study that you have to do after, after a conversion course. Um, and the good thing about a training contract is it, it gives you certainty because you know that once you've done your exams and your conversion, you'll go and work for that firm for two years before you qualify. Um, and it also financially, it's a lot better because um, the law firm the law firm pay for you to do your exams. So that that's what happened to me. I was offered a training contract um, after applying to loads of firms in my final year of university, um, and then yeah, one of them offered me a training contract. So I went off and did my law conversion. Very nice. And is that sort of easy to find that bit of information? Is are there websites which say this? Are, these are all of the law conversions open, or is it? Do you have to go through agencies to find? You know, the actual. Is it like a normal job? How do you find the information? Um, it can be a bit of a minefield, to be honest, because there's loads and loads of information out there, and there's obviously you know there's there's loads of law firms that you, you can apply to 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 do your training contract. Um, there's some really good websites out there. There's one called Lawyer to Be and also Legal Cheek. And they've got loads of really, really good information that's kind of aimed at, uh, you know, A-level students, uh, people who are at university, people who are interested in law. And it, it sets out the kind of different paths to becoming a lawyer in a far more eloquent way than I'm probably doing right now. Um, <laughs> and there, there's, there's lots and lots of information about things like, um, you know, the, 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 the packages of training that, that different law firms offer um, and, you know, what you need to do to apply. Um, because it, it can be quite a grueling process because um, 
often demand way outstrips supply of these training contracts. So I applied for about 10, I think, and only got offered one. So you can have a, you know, a really good CV, um, but you also have to really persevere and you kind of, it, it's worth doing your research. Um, so, so, you know, you know what you're doing. I think that's fantastic. And it really, it's good to know that, you know, you don't get everything when you go through college. And I remember this myself, but I remember applying and auditioning for gigs and you, it felt like a never ending stream of things yeah. not happening, but you kind of keep working on your CV, you keep working on, you know, the polish that you bring to your communication. So, I mean, I know when yeah. you were at Hamilton, you did the music. I'm wondering, you know, do, do you feel that maybe keeping a balance of like doing the things at the student union, doing the music, maybe sport as well, helped you with your communications when you went for the legal conversions and things? Absolutely, 100%. Um, because to be honest, when you're going for interviews and you're applying for these jobs, people people are interested in you as a person as much as your academic qualifications so if they're presented with a cv and there's something really interesting on it like you know hot house tours across the world or you know the, these these extracurricular things that you, you've been involved in they're more likely to ask you about that in an interview than perhaps you know the you know, the, the B you might have got in at your A-level maths or, or whatever it is, because they want to have a conversation with another human being. Um, and that filters through to the job itself as well, because a lot of my job is, you know, communicating with clients and other lawyers. And what what makes your day interesting is is as well as as well as the, the law, which is which is I find interesting. It's it's also the conversations you have with people and you know getting to know you know what what people are interested in. So a hundred percent, I I think yeah. balance in of, of your academics and uh, and music and the other things you do is is so important. I I couldn't agree more. I really couldn't. I, even now when I have to talk to people all over the world, I try and have a little bit of knowledge about lots of different things. Whether it's I'm mean, I'm not a big race car fan, but I know that there's a couple of guys that we talk to about racing cars and sometimes it's rugby, sometimes it's music and art and sometimes it's politics. And, with, you know, that ability to communicate that comes from, um, you know, being in a band or being in a football team or being in a netball team. You know, those are really good soft skills, which I think, you know, I think employers value nowadays. So I'm going to start tying it up because I know you're busy with um, actually huge amounts of real work. So have you got any favourite memories from from when you played with us or music just in general whether you're at university I know that we always re we always remember you just being super kind and that was the thing that kind of stood out you'd come over with Tom Dennis I think it was Tom and uh, you were just like you'd sit in the section and everybody gravitated to just having a nice conversation there was never any ego there was never any um, drama and that kind of really balanced personality is something that you know really helps the world go around so i don't know if you've got anything or any life lessons that you feel like sharing oh starting with the musical memories first i my my first memory of hot house is, is coming to a i think it was a latin summer school <laughs> and i was really nervous because i had i'd never had any interaction with hot house before and I was you know I was you know teenage teenage nervousness I was you know what's everyone going to be like and everyone was just so incredibly friendly and I just felt completely at home straight away and it was it was so lovely um and I would say like I, being involved in musical ensembles which I have been you know throughout throughout my my life pretty much I still am I still play with a band in in London Brilliant. um it like the, the sense of community is, is absolutely the best the best thing about being involved in music and also getting to play with people who are so incredibly talented is just so so nice as well so great um life lessons in general uh i think just yeah always maintain a sense of balance like work hard but play hard as well like be, be interested in the things you're interested in don't ever feel like the time you spend playing music is wasted because I I absolutely I absolutely don't regret um all the time I've spent being involved in, in music at, across across my life so far no, honestly a fabulous message thanks Ruth I really appreciate it and you know for all those listeners at home she is a superstar person and we think she's wonderful I'll put the links in the the box underneath for the I think it was legal to be and legal cheat so that if anybody's reading it, is they right? If they get that right? Uh, it's lawyer to be and legal cheek. I can I can send them across. 
that would be perfect and then mums and dads you know you can click on that one and if you want to connect with uh, Ruth I'm sure she won't mind if you reach out on LinkedIn it's a really nice place for professionals to develop their um, their network of people that they support you know their mentors and things so um, thanks very much for signing in and listening we really appreciate it and huge love and thanks very much to Ruth for being a superstar and please remember to subscribe and we'll look forward to seeing you on another episode soon have a great day everybody bye for now